Gibson stole my idea, and I'm a little bit salty about it. Welcome back, troglodytes, to your yeah, yeah, yada, yada, yada. Let's just get into it today. You see this? This is my signature guitar I developed for April Fools. It has come to fruition. Okay, sure, it's not exactly like the LP400. Sure, we don't have the staple Alnico 5 pickup hip here. It's technically a Les Paul standard instead of a custom, but it's got enough of the elements that I know somebody in the demo shop created this as a tribute to that April Fools video. And I'm not upset about that. And in fact, I'm quite flattered. Thank you, guy who made this thing a reality. What makes me upset is they're trying to charge $8,000 for this. This is just a regular Les Paul standard. 60s. I mean, that's like a $3,000 brand new guitar. So they want two and a half times the price point? That just seems a little bit weird in my opinion, but let's look at this. So you have zero pickups at all in this thing, except for a piezo element. If you're not familiar with what that is, essentially you have a little wire that comes off the bottom of your bridge. So that gets routed into the body right under here. And then you have your circuitry within your normal route. So this is going to sound like one of those electric acoustic guitars. But what's really fascinating about this is the fact that it doesn't have any routes. How did this get to the demo shop like this? It must have just been a blank body. Because you don't even have stop bar tailpiece holes right here that they like filled in and put a trapeze on here. And sure, this isn't quite 34 burst, but it's definitely a smaller burst than normal, so you know they were playing off of that. And it's got the beautiful flame top, which is just perfect. If you want another model kind of similar to this and you don't want to pay $8,000, you might as well buy one of the old Gibson Les Paul acoustics. As far as the headstock goes, looks like we got the button style tuners, not my favorite, but just a regular Gibson logo. And as far as the back, they did a, a little bit of a burst job here, just kind of gave it an antique violin vibe. That's pretty cool. But here's where things get even more strange. It still has the hole here. <laughs> <laughs> so it must have been routed for the back, but not for the top. It's either that or they filled it in and put like a new veneer over top. I'm not sure. All I know is I, I wish this was more appropriately priced like 3,500 bucks. Because then I would have had to have bought it to do the review and demo. But they called it Smoky Acousta Burst. And surprise, surprise, it's still available if you really want it, but I would not suggest paying anywhere near that much for it. We got Magenta Glow Firebird Custom. That is certainly an out there finish for one of these customs. And in fact, it's been a while since we've seen one of these in the demo mod collection. But something about this looks off center. Like the fretboard seems to line up, but doesn't that seem a little bit farther over than normal? Maybe it's just throwing us off because the pick guard is like resting underneath it. But it was a complete refinish and it appears to have a metallic nature to it. But if there was one I was tempted to get this week, it was actually a BB King Lucille model. So Gibson recently came out with the Legacy Edition. It's kind of cool because it has the Super 400 inlays and it has a transparent finish. So you can actually see a flame maple figuring on the top. So even though there's like a million Lucille models out there, this one was pretty cool for that. But these things came in stock, sold out really quickly, and we're just now starting to see some more show up at dealers. And they're 7,000 brand new. So when this one showed up in a cool custom finish called Marble Burst, for original retail value, I was thinking, maybe this is the review piece. Because it's not exactly silver burst, even though it kind of looks like that at first glance. You really got to zoom in here. It looks like the surface of the moon, or marble, which is where they got their name marble burst from. But I'm not sure if the gold hardware works or not. It's like... Sometimes yes, sometimes no. It was certainly an interesting finish. But for me, it's all about putting a theme over the entire guitar to tell a story. So when I flipped over to the back and saw nothing has changed, I was a little bit confused. So back here, we still have the flame maple showing through on a transparent black finish. So maybe you could say it's like the dark side of the moon as to the top. Although had they had bursted the back, the edges and the neck, I would have had to have bought this. But since they didn't, I just decided to pass. But I'm real surprised Nobody else did jump on this. I mean, custom color Lucille's. There are people that collect these. So maybe I'll get a regular one one of these days to review and demo. Until then, you can check out this Epiphone version in a white. That was actually a really good guitar. Next up is a standard 50s in what they called Gold Burst. So that likely means the start of life is a gold top. They sprayed the edges and then maybe put an amber clear coat over top of it. P94 pickups make it pretty interesting. And the back is black. Here's kind of an interesting one, classic VOS. VOS is that gunk they put on the custom shop one, so it's kind of interesting to have that on a USA product. But it looks like they've got all the aged hardware, but didn't really change too much else. It looks like this knob is not quite the same color as the other ones. And to match that theme, either that one's just catching the light a little bit differently, or it's chrome versus the other screws being black. 
This is very interestingly named Bacon Donut. Maybe there's more to this finish in person. I'm not sure where they got that name from. I mean, I suppose it's kind of bacony like in color. And is that a burst job on the neck? Let's adjust our contrast here to help you see it. That does appear to be some sort of a color variation. My best guess is this has some sort of a metallic overcoat shot over the original cherry finish and it just makes it look different in person. So kind of like the glaze of a donut, whereas the wood grain is like symbolizing the bacon lines of marbling. Continuing here, we've got a standard 60s and trans faded marigold. Another kind of interestingly named one, but I like this guitar. Heavily flamed on this side. It's got a lot of flame here and then it just kind of disappears at this angle anyways. It's a cool finish. And as far as the back, I can't quite tell if they did anything. All right, let's start kicking things up a notch. We've got a Flying V Custom here in dark natural satin. I can't tell if I hate it or if it's okay, but you've got a pole pieceless neck pickup. You've got a regular pickup in your bridge. You've got a tortoiseshell guard. I don't think I've ever seen that on a Flying V in this style. You've got your string through. It's not Karina, it's mahogany. It's got your custom style neck and the back is all natural, but they gave you a Gibson USA case instead of custom shop. That's no fun. I mean, it's unique. It's not your usual black one. Let's see, did it sell? Yes, it did. Then we have Biplane Sparkle on a Les Paul Classic. I think it was around like 2016, 2017. Gibson had a finish very similar to this. That's a nice sparkle. And I like the choice of leaving the back a cherry color. That would have a good cross section. The lefties were graced with hot pepper burst. That is so strange. I kind of like it. It's a lot of orange for a Les Paul. Very, very thin border, but this kind of flame figuring with it works pretty well. And you've got a natural mahogany back with moto plates on the back for some reason. But this thing sold fast and SG standard. Oops, somebody messed up. What is this? It's a remade Captain Kirk Douglas SG. They've just swapped our pick guard to remove the fancy elements there. And you no longer have that middle pickup, but the routes are going to be there unless they filled them in. And then you get a nice cool custom gold finish. Front and back, that was a no brainer for 25. And then we've got Grape Gush. 2100 bucks is a little bit much for a studio, but it is a pretty interesting finish. And you've got the Dirty Fingers pickups here, new clear knobs. You get a case with it. You get the old timey Gibson logo done up in purple. They bursted the back, the neck, the headstock. Can't quite tell if they did the edge burst, but it's at least purple. If there ever was a special studio to pay that money for, at least they nailed all the elements. So I'm not surprised that thing sold. Then we have Ebony Space Sparkle 70s Explorer. That was only a $200 upcharge. Cool custom pick guard, awesome sparkle finish. Photos would never do that justice. Oh man, they even did the headstock. That was cool. Then this 60 standard was called Aqua Sandbar. I like it. It's a mix between natural and blue, and the back has some interesting wood grain and figuring. Here's another blue sparkle guitar at 4,700. Wow. <laughs> if you need a Floyd Rose equipped guitar, that was a good one to get. That looks pretty good even in the stock photos, and typically Brunswick Blue Sparkle doesn't look that good in photos, unless you have really bright lights. And accesses and apex head carves, they're all right in my book. And then the last one was a 57 Les Paul custom reissue. This is a good example of 57 reissues have mahogany tops. You can't normally see it because they're typically black beauties, but this one's done up in natural on the back as well. However, I think it would have been cool had they did like a black burst on the back or just left the back completely black and just left it a natural top. But that is going to wrap it up for the mod collection. Now we need to talk about the demo shop. This is going to take a little bit longer than usual because they're having a sale. I think it was Monday night they announced a 15% off sale for all their old inventory. And there were some good prices in here. I had a post in my YouTube community section and Facebook page saying jump on some of these. So here is one of the brand new satin finish 60 standards, 1700. That's a good price. 6600 might sound crazy to pay for a Karina Explorer, but remember, these are 10 grand brand new. This is close to dealer cost. That's how crazy of a deal this one was. And yet they still can't sell it. There's a reason why I don't necessarily suggest buying those $10,000 non-limited edition Karina ones. There are better buys on the market. However, if you want one though, that that's a pretty fair price to get into one. This was a pretty good price for a 59 standard. I mean, they're 6,700 brand new. The top is okay on that one. But this thing, 
I don't understand why this hasn't sold yet. This is a custom color 1960 reissue in root beer finish with the most beautiful flame top ever. This is the one I told people to buy and it's still not sold. It blows my mind. If this was $400 cheaper, I would be buying it as a guitar store. But then again, I like root beer and I, I like the finish and everything's just perfect about that one. This was pretty crazy as well. I mean, four and a half thousand for the three pickup full on black beauty treatment here. It's got the mahogany top like we were just talking about, the aged lacquer. Sure, you gotta live with the demo stamp, but if you're gonna play the thing, what do you care? They didn't even steal the custom shop case from you. Here's another cool 59. Really good price for a 57 gold top. That is better than most used prices that you'll find on even like 2000s era 57s. And then a 58 with a nice plain top. The market is definitely drying up a little bit for the demo shop if they can't sell through stuff at those good of prices. But as far as this week, in case you missed our previous episode, Mesa Boogies are now starting to invade the demo shop. So we had a Rosette 300. I don't know anything about that amp. I've always been intimidated with amps that have so many knobs on them. <laughs> I like them a little bit more simple. But it looks like we've got some direct out if that's what you like. I can never get direct out to sound good. But then again, I'm not the best at miking amps in general. But look at this thing, Transatlantic Head TA-15. Looking like Rob Halford over here. <laughs> and then they did sell one of the compact bass amps as well. And ooh, a mini rectifier at 1300. So far, it seems most of the Mesa Boogie sell pretty well for them on the demo shop within a week. But as far as guitars go, there was a 50 standard in a very dark tobacco sunburst. It's like tri-burst, but not, but it has the natural back with tortoise plates and black tuner tips. The special tribute was interesting, not because necessarily the price point or the model. It's got a particularly nicely flamed neck. But I wanted to share it because, oops, somebody <laughs> must have installed the wrong style pick guard on it. This tribute had a pretty interesting top. But this classic, that's a tasty top. 1899's not too bad either. I would not blame you if you wanted to pick that thing up. The back's nothing too special. This SG Junior was advertised as toasted mahogany. So is it like actually torrified mahogany or is it just because they put a satin finish on it and played with the moto everywhere? It's looking like the latter. And then this, you see this? SG Standard 61 faded. This is what Gibson gave us, a, a $2,200 satin finished with the trem system. This is what they should have gave us, the stop bar tail variety, because most players, they, they don't want the trem that doesn't stay in tune all that good. And they could have enticed us with this lower price point. So I'm curious, is this like a prototype model or did they just strip the finish off of a gloss one? And I thought this AFD had a very nice top on it, especially at a discount. Those things are 3,200 brand new now. Now we need to take a flight over to the European side of things. They had a lot of guitars this week. So we had a Modern Access Custom. I mean, 3,600 bucks, you don't see these things too often over there. But the reason why I wanted to show this one is, unfortunately, this is what we're going to have to deal with in the future for most of the Access Customs. They look really nice and sleek when they're brand new, but over time, lacquer sinking will occur and you're going to get that line, which is kind of ugly. Now, not all of them are going to be this bad. This one was clearly used and maybe a little bit abused. But it is the sign of the times as these newer guitars start to age. There's a standard T lefty, you know, lefty in that market. I, I guess 2000 not too bad if you don't mind some wear. But I like this 1941 SJ100. Now, it's a reissue of that, but it looks the part, does it not? It's very old timey. Love the color that they have on it, a nice natural amber. It's got the old style Gibson logo inlaid in Mother of Pearl. And then this one was actually quite old. It's from 2013, almost 10 years old at this point. Wow. I'm pretty sure this is the first L5 we've seen in the European demo shop. It's quite expensive at 10 grand, but again, try to get one of those over there with value added tax and all that stuff for that same price. And I think you'll realize that's quite difficult. I do believe this one's gonna sit around for a while because what fancy jazz arch top guy wants a big demo on the back? But the sides are particularly nicely flamed, almost slightly quilty at the same time. It's a beautiful piece. I'd say the worst thing about it is the demo stamp itself. This thing threw me for a loop, late 60s 335 light burst. Is this really a 60s guitar? Because <laughs> 
a lot of it was looking pretty good. Like, this is not your standard Gibson logo and stuff. It almost looks like our truss rod cover was slightly off center but they they really nailed that early 70s kind of look on this one especially with the style of tuners they used and the serial number that they put on there but no this is uh, some sort of a memphis reissue that's a cool model there's one of those really expensive heavy murphy aged ones it had a really cool back that's the only reason i wanted to share that ten thousand dollar beast this 2017 standard had a fantastic top at this angle. But then you look at it at this angle and it's like just all gone. But what's cool about that is you know it's going to be a very wide active top in person. There was an Oxford Grey Les Paul standard. Kind of just looks like the olive drab green but maybe a little bit different. It was clearly used and it's based on R8 reissue specs. You don't see that every day. This J15 has a nice natural finish. But for me it's all about that back. That's got some cool grain. For about 2600 bucks, there was a beautiful Blues Burst 335. I saw this and went, wow, that is nice. I just wish it had one layer of cream binding right before the black like we saw last week because that would have popped this even more. However, I, I like the blue and black too. This has got a the burst on the top, back, sides, neck, headstock. It marks all the boxes for me. We've even got a little bit of flame figuring in our maple neck. You don't see too many ES-175s over there. Here is one in the demo shop that sold rather quickly. Here's an ES-390, uh, a model you never see. It's a shrunken down 335 custom shop style. It's got mini humbuckers in it. It's kind of weird. It's a fascinating model. I would like to document one in the future. They had a pretty good deal on a modern Firebird at 1600. A Pelham Blue 63 reissue, which I mean, you really could not go wrong at 3200 bucks on that. Perhaps the steal of the week was this thing, one of these semi-hollow ESLP bases. Like, you just don't see these on the market too often. And it's got a killer back. Cool wood grain and all. You guys remember when Gibson made this into uh, a base six? Oh, w what is going on there? <laughs> It's almost like they lent this to an artist and there was a, they got a big ding on the neck. So they hired somebody to cut out a section of the neck, inlay new wood, and then like sand it smooth. It's either that or the finish reacted to something that was perfectly circular. Okay, I guess there's a reason why that one was cheap, but it's still worth it. All they say is lacquer damage. But then you got another 59 standard, great top on that for that price. And then the last one to share with you guys was actually a rare model. This is a 2016 Sunken Treasure Les Paul. If I remember correctly, I think they made about 400 of each of the finishes. There was a natural one and a dark green. I think it's Martin who uses sinker mahogany. It's essentially the same thing. It was submerged wood for a long time and they brought it out. I mean, a lot of it's just a marketing gimmick calling it Sunken Treasure, but it's kind of a cool model. At first, I hated these natural ones and wanted one of the green ones to document because you know spooky flying dutchman stuff but i've really come around on these natural ones and i would like to document one of these and maybe even own it in my personal collection generally these things sell between like 28 to 4,000, depending on condition originality how many are on the market at a particular given time personally i've been hoping for one around 2500 so here's one that showed up all value added taxes and whatnot in the eu market 2700 bucks absolute screamer deal all right troglodytes i hope you enjoyed this week's episode definitely some crazy stuff and some great deals but that's all we have to talk about don't forget to like comment and subscribe and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one take care Hey, since we were talking about big jazz arch top guitars, have you seen this episode? A very nice ES-175 that was burnt on a famous TV show and then later restored. You can check that one out here.